Today on the Rockabilly Arts, we got a new plasma cutter. Quick little backstory for you. When we originally started the shop, it was a couple of friends. We decided we were just gonna get a shop, place to work on our cars, store our stuff, because our garages were getting collectively empty or full of entirely too much stuff. When you have a car that's 21 feet long, it's kind of hard to have a lot of extra garage space. So we got, a, got some shop space. They sold the building, we had to move. Uh, my shop man at the time wasn't able to move with, so I had to shoulder the entire cost of it. Which then means I need a way to produce income from said shop, uh, because this isn't what I do for a living, and it's not what anybody here at the shop does for a living, so it's basically a hobby business. But we needed a way to be able to pay for it, so we started acquiring tools to build furniture and stuff. Well, fast forward about five years now, and we have three companies running out of this uh, shop, because, you know, like Jeff is working on cars all the time, Joel's fabricating stuff, Shadow is, is making art with uh, the blast cabinet, I build furniture, and we have a second business uh, here called Psycho Speedworks, which is listed under my LLC, where we can make automotive parts and stuff like that, aside from the furniture business. A couple months ago, uh, you know, I did a video on the plasma cutter, well, we bought that, and it's great for cutting sides. You know, it's got a razor weld, uh, razor cut 45 plasma torch, and it'll cut 16 to 18 gauge steel perfectly fine at 80 to 100 inches per minute. But when you get into more thick metal, like three eighths and half inch and quarter and stuff like that, it just won't do it. Like I, I really have been trying not to use the pun, but it frankly just won't cut it. And when you're building a triangulated four-link suspension for a 1972 Cadillac, you have to use really thick metal to build all the brackets, and obviously nobody sells a kit. And so I have to make everything myself. We also have made a ton of scrap metal using the plasma cutter that we have because we'll get into false starts, uh, you know, because it'll only run at 80 to 100 inches per minute, wherever the plasma torch is at that given moment, is imparting a lot of heat on the metal which will cause it to warp. And then when it goes to wrap it across, because I don't have any Z axis or a torch height controller yet, gotta work on that soon. Uh, you know, if metal bends up a little bit, it'll hit it, knock the work piece out of the way, and you've ruined your cut. Now, because of all of these things, uh, and the fact that our plasma, you know, making signs and art and stuff like that has supplemented the, the rent here at the shop pretty well, uh, we needed a more reliable way to do it without wasting a ton of metal plus C aforementioned thing about cutting thicker steel. We have a new plasma though. It is a Hypertherm Powermax XP45 and it's a bad bitch. So uh, I'm gonna unbox it and we're gonna put it together on the table. We're gonna make some test cuts and just see how it goes. Maybe if, uh, maybe if I have some extra footage laying around of running the old machine, uh, I can throw that in here, but I've already taken it apart, so. Uh, the nice part too is it's perfectly adequate for cutting thin steel um, by hand. So we're just gonna keep the old plasma cutter around for doing body work and for you know trimming you know sheets to size and stuff like that. And then we'll let the big big daddy machine do its thing. So let's get started. This is super exciting! New plasma cutter! So the Power Max from Hyperther, the Power Max 45 XP. Let's open this thing up. You can tell I was a boy scout, you know, I was cut away from yourself. <laughs> hey boys, I don't want to look at that again. Machine torch. Manual. Zoomables. Clark zoomables. Y'all ready for this? In case you're wondering, yes, that's why the shop is always a mess. All right, so this is a plasma cutter. It's very exciting, isn't it? Um, 
air inlet, water filter on the back. Now, a couple of videos ago, I did present our air dryer, which is sitting way back there next to the air compressor, but we have one of those too. Uh, fortunately, it's getting a little chilly right now and like, you know, it hasn't rained in weeks. So uh, the humidity is not too bad. Um, actually, before we get started, let's talk about a few things. Uh, first off, the power cable. This, this is a unit, man. Um, I hate to quote Cletus on that one, but yeah, this thing, good lord, is that zero gauge? Uh, three gauge. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Nice long power cable, too. About 10 feet, so that'll be nice. The, uh, let's see, the torque cable. Here's the ground wire. Ground wire, not that bad. It's nice long though. Uh, plus it has universal fitting, which is the same one I think that's on my welder. So if I need another ground cable, hopefully I don't, then uh, these are usually good for about 200 amps. So it's not, not that big of a deal, but this is the money maker. The machine torch. This, um, if you note the size of the cable on this one, so the universal end, uh, or not universal end, that applies to this machine, this is a 25 foot hose. So you've got, you know, electrodes flow through here. You've got the uh, spring at the very ends so that you don't get a lot of lash uh, on both ends. And then because the machine torch is built for a uh, torch height controller, it has a geared slot on it. Uh, I'll have to read the instructions on how to put the electrode together. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Now, if you happen to own a Lingmeyer Crossfire, um, we did the XP, so we recently added the expansion kit, which takes it from 24 inches of working Y to 33 inches, still at 24 inches of, of X. Because we're switching from a handheld torch um, to the machine torch, I had to buy a new um, holder for that, so there's that. And then 10 minutes after I ordered this and paid for the shipping on it, I realized, oh yeah, this probably has a different connector. So here's the connector for this torch to go to the uh, Langmeyer Crossfire. Uh, hoping, and Langmeyer, if you're watching this, and I hope you do, please offer a torch height controller. I don't want to build one. I, mean, I can, it's cool, it'll be fun, but it'll just end up with another dozen projects sitting on my workbench that may or may not get finished. Having said that though, I do have about half a dozen NEMA 17 motors I'm not doing anything with, so probably build one pretty easy. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go get this thing on the table and cut some metal. Ah! Let me say, <laughs> wow, dude, that thing is fast. I mean, really fast. So I just ran a test part, a uh, little grinder mount. You know, we'll bend this up in the in the brake here and, you know, place to put my grinders so that it's not, you know, 
just throw it on the table. Dross is not bad at all. I don't know uh, if it'll focus on this or not, but uh, this was run at 45 amps at 240 inches per minute. It took maybe a minute and a half and it's amazing. I mean, like the cuts are nice. The corners are nice and square. Uh, I had no pierce delay whatsoever. Um, why don't we do some video of it actually doing its job? So uh, yeah, this was a test cut. So hopefully I don't ruin a bunch of metal trying to show you a nice, nice piece here. So let's, let's do it. The new plasma is freaking epic. So this is like 22 by 30 or something like that. So yeah, the expansion kit definitely made uh, made things better. Um, I think I had a piece fall off though and it maladjusted because this part right here should be the same size as that one and it didn't cut all the way through here. So uh, I'm gonna have to recut this one, but that's no fault of the cutter. That's, the thing is moving so fast. I can't figure out what's falling through and what's gonna hit. So. Um, yeah, there you go. Power or Hypertherm Power Max 45 XP is a beast. Highly recommend. So, not until we meet again. Drive fast, take chances. Safety third. Good night.